Hi and welcome to another episode of Wine and Wisdom. I'm Thomas Le Huang and you're listening to the TL podcast where knowledge is shared and no one takes themselves too seriously. Hey guys. Hey, how you doing? Good. I haven't got hey it. Guys. Have you got it? Yeah, we got it. You awesome. Got it? We got it. You got, got it? it? Got, got it, got it, got it. it. Cameron's got, got it. it. We got it. Got it. He's got it. He's Sorry, got it. Louise, who only washed it. I just washed it. Yes. No, you put no effort in this week. It's beautiful. Well done. Honestly, Cam, I tried if, to give, I tried I to give you a compliment. And everything. You know what? Cam looks great, Louise. I tried to give you a compliment. I never wear my hair out. I never wear it out. I always have it tied up because I'm always... You know, it's just easier that way. No, I wear it out. In the bag. Is it, pardon? So does Thomas in the bag. His hair is in the bag. Anyway, <laughs> don't <I>? go. <laughs> so what's been doing this week? Busy, busy. I don't know, I don't know. Um, what, what about you guys? Had the time to read the news? Because I, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> we're going to drink the wine either. Stop it. Wine first. All right. Miss Lou, you got the good hair. Show us the good wine. Wine first. Wine first. Okay. Yeah, like, how many so this is a... episode 497. We drink wine, we talk about the news, and we do the topic. Wine <laughs> news topic. That's what we're doing. Wine news topic. That's exactly we're what we're doing. Oh, wine. Very promising this week. It's a good start. All right. 1,974 right. episodes. We still haven't worked it out. Okay. So this is a 2018. It's Penley Estate, Kunawara Shiraz Cabernet. So I was just saying earlier, this this label here is actually a um a velvet label. So not much right up on the back, but I can tell you it's a Kate Goodman. She's the winemaker. So um, it was a wax seal top. So that always means business. Um, smells delicious and I can't wait to taste it and I'll let you guys know. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right, I, go, I go second. I've got a uh, Penske uh, this, this, this week. <laughs> and it's the uh, Henry Seven, 2018, and it's made up um, of, of four grapes. And it's it's an amazing thing because the this guy here uh, in South Australia planted the first seven acres uh, uh, of grapes in uh, down there. And when he died, his his uh, his widow actually stopped that. But uh, in, in in his memory, uh, this this company decided no 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 that's the first guy that planted these. Seven acres. We 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 want to keep his name, and apparently I should have kept it for another eleven years. But you know who cares? Um, I want to drink something. So that's nice. where the seven comes from. So yeah, the seven is from the seven that's... acres of land. Yep. Yep. Right, wow. So I tell you straight away when it's good or not. But I thought we we among friends we might as well drink good stuff. I mean, whoever brings shit stuff to this stuff here does not deserve uh, to be a, a, a wine sommelier. <laughs> so, Cam, I suppose that leads into what you're drinking. Oh, is it? <laughs> At least I know my stuff shit. Lou just went because the label's velvet. <laughs> <laughs> hair looks Hello. good. Hair looks good. Velvet surprisingly, lake. surprisingly, for $14.60. $14? <laughs> $14? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I've been there you know, for $14.60. I think someone paid 20 bucks to bring it to my house. Oh, That's a okay. listen, listen, it is dangerous to drink red bleaches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, I've, what I've worked out is I've seriously questioned the people who are rating wines on Vivino because this $14.60 bottle rated at 4.1. What? 4.1. <laughs> it's just value for money. And when I went to my wine fridge, the other people. So the, per, the I've really got a problem with the people who came to my house on the weekend because all I was left with was 3.3s and $14, 4.1. So I blame the people who come to my house on the weekend for being cheapskates. Mm. Um, but anyway, it's a Penfold. It's a Cab Sav. It's 2021, so it's way too young. It's from Canunga Hill. The label's not velvet. I didn't want to drink it, but we were forced. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So I love you. Yeah. yeah, and that's get good wine. Ooh. All right, I've got a I've got a Western Australian wine. This this wine comes from um, it's it's called Howard Park from Scottsdale. 
winery. Uh, this winery is a is about 20 minutes, 30 minutes north of Margaret River. Um, it's a 2012 Shiraz. Yeah. Um, so hopefully it's going to be a good drop. Uh, the, this family in that I started the winery it was one of the first wineries to open up over in that area, that northern region of um, the wine making country territory in sort of Western Australia. Um, so hopefully it's going to be a good drop. I don't know. Let's go. Let's try it. Cam, just be careful. Okay. Look at the color of mine. It's uh -huh. almost black. Look at that. Yeah. So, so what is yours? A cab? It's a um, Shiraz Cabernet. Yeah. So. Yeah, my, mine is sixty-seven percent Shiraz. That's right. It's it's, it's well, lighter. See. Eh? Mine's sixty-four percent Shiraz from block six. Cab uh, twenty-five um, Cabernet from block five, and then block nineteen of another Cabernet of eleven percent. So. Mm. Mine's one hundred percent awesome. So screw you all. Yours is one hundred percent. Yours is yours is bleach. Cheers, like guys. Said. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Yep, good. Highly recommend. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. All right. So what's news? Ah, uh, all the news. Interest, interest rates. Interest rates gone up. We spoke about it last week with the American pushing up their 0 0.75. That there was pain coming up, pain came straight away. We are now at 1.85 in the last four months. So forecast moving forward, guys. And I'm, I'm going to sort of ask you a, a far out question there. I've heard a lot of people talking because we're going up so quick. Uh, well, we're going to point, we'll slow the uh, inflation rate and the Reserve Bank will then start, start to quite quickly reduce those interest rates. Do you think that's going to happen? And if it yeah. does, do you think what sort of time frame do you think? Is it going to be I a... Am Six months, AMP, AMP Capital's forecast is that our assessment remains that the RBA won't need to raise the cash rate above 3% and that the peak will likely be around 2.6 either later this year or early next. By late next year, rates are likely to be falling. This implies a slowing in the pace of rate hikes ahead of which should help head off worst case scenarios for the property market and the economy. To be honest, I did a training. I did a training session with my guys on Wednesday, and we're just going to stop talking about interest rate rises because there's work to be done. There seems to be, yeah, you know, the whole world's got COVID at the moment, but no one's talking about COVID. So let's make interest rate hikes COVID and just go to work. I think is the best um, the best strategy. I, I've given up trying to work out what anyone's going to do and what effect it has because they raise them one week, no one buys a house. They raise them the next week and. 87 people buy a house, I don't know. So, um, you know, you know, whatever it is, there's always something saying it's unaffordable, um, housing industry this, housing industry that. And as agents, we're like, oh, there's a lack of stock, there's a lack of buyers, there's, there's always this, there's always this, this sort of negative mindset. Flip it on its head and, and you know, uh, and we've often said, and we know Scott Matthews loves saying it, what could be good in this? Or what is good in this? And I think we need to, you're right, Ken, we need to stop that chatter mm. in our own head look for the positive in all these situations oh, I don't and i think it's a great great time great time to be a real estate agent personally yeah uh, well, that's, what, that's yeah. what i've been saying to my people you know um unfortunately there will be a lot of people that have to sell and some of our best times have been in tough markets you know and i think um yeah it's, it is going to be hopefully short and sharp like they have done and i hope that prediction that you just read cam is somewhat right um, I did hear that from several other sources as well, so I hope that is correct, but it still means that there's going to be a lot of people in that time period that are affected and a lot of, um, like I know, and I think I said it last week, and if I didn't, I'll say it now, but we've got landlords putting rents up $50, $100 at a time, um, which is a lot, and we're seeing rents increase as the prices are coming down, but you know, you know what that does in the end, it's, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what does happen, but who knows? Who knows? So from what you're saying, it's best to buy now because rent's going up. <laughs> well, I mean, look, once upon a time, it was cheaper to buy in Port Macquarie than it was to rent. Now it's flipped on its head extremely, um, you know, because we have some, and I don't know what it exactly is because we haven't always been known for having a lot of employment opportunities, but thanks to COVID, we now do um we have some of the best returns up here like we've got properties that return some of them returning like seven eight percent like where else do you get that like you know i don't Henry think we've got Wilson anything currently that that can you send me those <laughs> yeah but you no, know, I think, I, know I, think, 
I think Sorry, you flip yes. your words around. It's a hundred percent still cheaper to buy than it is to rent. We got well, not where I live. It's extreme. Cheaper to buy than it is to rent. So down here, which are we're getting seven seven hundred and fifty dollars a week for a pretty average three bed two bath home in rent. The mortgage yeah. repayments are nowhere near that. Nowhere near that. No, yeah. so it's much cheaper to buy than it is to rent, 100%. Yeah, but what, what's the average sale for a prop? Like, what's the average price for a property? Because we know with the interest rate rise on Tuesday, that added an extra basically $800 a month to an $800,000 mortgage. What can you buy down there? How much does that three cost cost you? 800 grand. Yeah. So the remortgage. You're mortgage. paying, so you can buy for 800 and have a remortgage of, have a mortgage of $500 a week. Not at 800, not at the current rate now, no way. Depends on how you do it. Yeah, well. Depends on how you do it. There's no way if it was, if it was, if there's any other way out of it, there's no way you should be paying eight, $900 a week rent instead of buying a house at the moment. There's just no way, no, if it can be done. Now, and I've got, unfortunately, I've got renters calling me daily. Have you got anything yet? Have you got anything yet? Have you got anything yet? We can't find anything. No one's letting us in. There's 20 applications on every house. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Mm -hmm. It's it's horrible. It is mm. absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't empathise enough. And at the end of the day, I mean, the thing people need to know about us is we don't make the final decision about who rents a property either. It's, exactly. it's definitely the owner. So, um, mm -hmm people in that position really should be at least asking the question, right? There's many people, I sat there for a long time going, oh, I'll never be able to buy a house, right? Turns out I could. So at least go and ask somebody. Mm -mm, absolutely. Because they do now count rent. They, they never used to count the rent you were paying yeah. towards your um, affordability, right? Towards your yeah. servicing of a loan. They now count your rent. So if you can pay $700 a week in rent, they're yeah. going to look favorably on you paying Five hundred and fifty dollars a week in a mortgage. That's that's the truth of the matter. Truth of the matter. So mm. um, anyway, let's not talk about interest rates anymore. <laughs> no, the rental side of things. I mean, that's it's that's a horrible. It's a bit hard out there for everyone, and they've gone up quite quickly. And it's quite it's quite amazing how fast it's turned. Because in the middle of COVID, um, another great subject, rent was like there was so such a high vacancy rate, mm. so high. And yeah. how quickly that's turned is it's amazing. It's mm -hmm. amazing. And the fact that it's turned so quickly and now increasing, um, it's a great time to be a landlord. I'll tell you that now. Yeah. Well, we've from currently got a owners, vacancy rate. From a business owner's point of view, the, the reason I say let's not talk about it is because it's not an excuse, right? It's not a I got sent that stuff from AMP. I got sent by our uh, a conveyancer I work fairly closely with, and he had sent it to his staff to help motivate his staff. And the message along with it went, "Don't worry, we'll ride the tough times." And I just wrote back to him. I said, "Mate, thanks for sending it, but our team's focused. We've got heaps on, so there's no doom and gloom here. Only the weak will struggle, and that's weak of mindset and weak of action." There's and he wrote back, "Shit, you're right. Like if you're, if we're sitting there." still three months after the interest rate started to rise blaming interest rates for lack of listings or lack of sales then it's in between your ears where you you're weak and where you lack it's not mm. people are selling so that's why we yeah. stop the talk absolutely amazing what about you Tio? what do you think it's going or what are you i think you guys said it enough i don't, I don't need to get to say more uh, so let's uh move on <clears throat> What's the uh, what's the next topic? Besides my wife's fantastic, that's why I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't be people, people say your microphone doesn't work properly, mate. It's because you don't speak. <laughs> no, it's not true. It's it's as, as Chris said before we went on air, can you give your microphone to Louise? Oh <laughs> look at these low blows. blows. Low blows. Chris, Chris, I was just paraphrasing something Chris might have mentioned earlier. That was all. Oh dear. Well, your microphone. Well, it's Commonwealth Games is on. Does anyone care? Oh, I haven't watched a bit of it, but I've heard we're killing it. So. <laughs> I think our swimmers are beating all the Ethiopians that have never seen a swimming pool before. So good on us. <laughs> what about us? I don't know. Is it happening down your area? I don't know about you guys, but um, fuel prices are seen to have dropped dramatically up here. Is that happening down I'm your way? Don't tell them, Lou. I can believe it. I've been paying $2.45 for diesel up here and I got it for $2.45 yesterday. 
So, wow. yeah. Is that just a up here thing, or are you guys finding that down no, there? No, we've, we've seen a, we've seen a little bit of a decrease really as well. Good. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen a bit of a decrease. We've I think supplies are coming back up. Wine, poison. <laughs> you don't think are gonna two dollars forty-five a litre. <laughs> <laughs> You oh, probably be in a better you're doing to, I knew. What are you doing to yourself, man? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it just shows I've got a cultured palate. Yes. <laughs> All right. What's the topic to this week, uh, Chris? Topic Why are we drowning in knowledge and starving for wisdom? No, it wasn't and, it's but. Okay. But and but starving for wisdom. Which is but. it, and or but? You just to change the question. Cam, go for it. Well, that's what I wanted to clarify the question because it was one of my points. This thing's twisted me around all week. I'm going, it, it, it confused the hell out of me. And it was the butt. I only worked out an hour ago. It was the butt that did it because the butt makes it seem like knowledge and uh, wisdom uh, dependent or interdependent, whereas I believe they're mutually exclusive. So if it was why are we starving in knowledge and well, why are we drowning in knowledge and starving for wisdom it, to me that makes more sense than why are we drowning in knowledge but starving for wisdom knowledge doesn't mean wisdom and wisdom doesn't mean knowledge so uh that's where i'll start nice i like it unfortunately it's linked <laughs> no, it's not linked <laughs> okay <laughs> out the gloves here we go <laughs> uh, why why would that be not be linked i mean unless unless you have knowledge you you, you can't get to wisdom exactly no, that's rubbish that's not rubbish too i wrote my definition before i looked up technical definitions and i wrote wisdom is the ability to know when and where and how to apply knowledge knowledge is factual wisdom is experiential so wisdom comes from experience Right, you can have no knowledge, but have lived through an experience, and you're going to be able to talk to someone with wisdom about that experience. Whereas, <clears throat> uh, and that, in a nutshell, without going too much further into it at the moment, is why the two things aren't linked and why they're completely different. Hmm. Mm. But through experience, don't we gain knowledge? That no, we gain effective. wisdom. We gain be, wisdom. No, but. Through, through, knowledge, through. knowledge is knowledge is getting a university degree in marketing. Yeah, but owning not, a, not owning necessarily. A I mean, when I when I become a when I started my trade as a cement renderer, I had no idea what I was doing. But after twenty two years of doing, I was a bloody good cement renderer. I had a lot of wisdom in that, and it was the accumulation of knowledge that led me to that wisdom, or the do's and don'ts and the, the shortcuts and so forth to achieve what I wanted to achieve when I was a cement renderer. It was 22 years of doing cement rendering, mate. It had nothing to do with the knowledge. You know, there's a tech. Let, I'll try. I've never rendered a wall, right? So let's. I'll have a go. I'll have a go, but see how we go. There's a technique. There's a technique. To, Please, no self blame, huh? No, I'm not blaming you. There's technique. We're gonna. We're gonna get. We're gonna get through a whole episode without me having a pity party. All right. We're gonna see. Oh. How we go. Okay. I haven't got it no. under shirt. There's a technique. There's a technique to mixing the mud. There's a technique to throwing the mud. There's a technique to getting the mud perfect. Yes? yes. Knowledge. Yes. Knowledge. Right? Yes. That's not wisdom. Wisdom okay. on knowing when, how, and, and whether you should or you shouldn't. Wisdom. Skill to render a wall, mate. You want to be bloody good after 22 years. doesn't make you then, wise. What, what I'm getting knowledge. at is you won't have the wisdom without the accumulation of knowledge. So I think they are interdependent. Uh, they're not I think you don't you can't achieve wisdom without going through those experiences, which are the experiences of the accumulation of knowledge. Exactly. Um, I said wisdom is experience, not knowledge. Knowledge is reading a book. Yeah, but the experience of the accumulation of knowledge on how to do something. I can experience this. I can experience jumping out of plane. Doesn't give me the wisdom, doesn't give me the knowledge on how to pack the chute. Right? No, uh, exactly. That, that, but 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 you have to have the experience. Exactly, mate. You have someone, to have the experience to but, get the but, but someone can read a book or go to as many courses as they want about jumping out of a plane. They won't know anything compared to the person who's actually jumped out of a plane. Hence, wisdom versus knowledge. Books versus experience. 
facts versus okay. intangibles. That's okay. We can we can agree to disagree because I think one leads into another. I just smash you. I'll smash you early. <laughs> right, you too. Oh, he hasn't. Chris. How about it? He hasn't. Right, on. So, Lou, tell it. Tell us what, what's your what's your thoughts on it? Okay. Well, to burst Cam's bubble. Bubble. Um, knowledge is something that always comes first. Wisdom, uh, wisdom <laughs> is built upon. I felt like bursting my boo -boo -boo and, and getting my boo wisdom. Wisdom is built upon knowledge. So, in other words, you cannot be wise without first being knowledgeable. Um, and being Rubbish. knowledgeable does not make you wise. Also, at the same time, I think my um, my conclusion: knowledge is. And, and it's we're not. We're not there yet. We, we just started. <laughs> That. Thank I'm, you. Yeah. Thank you. Got somewhere to go. She's got a hairdressing appointment. <laughs> oh, I've already been, apparently. Um, but well, okay. Well, I'll finish there. I, I, I think you cannot. You knowledge is is a base, and you can't go from that base to wisdom without first having the knowledge. Okay. So I think um, they're definitely not mutually exclusive, Cam, because you cannot. Like that's the old saying knowledge um, is knowing what to say and wisdom is knowing when to say it you know and so they they are definitely not mutually exclusive rubbish thomas i i, I think she just got you there man <laughs> i know many a person uh, who's been a bachelor of business and never opened a business so they wouldn't have a clue what they're talking about in, two, in October 2019, uh, the two of you boys were around. Uh, I, I think Louise, you hadn't joined us, but we had a podcast where we spoke about wisdom. And mm -hmm. back in those days, we had the acronym of CASH, where knowledge if, is an accumulation of, I'm sorry, wisdom is an accumulation of knowledge that is put through experience. And once you have the experience, you have to use judgment or maybe for a better word now, analysis so that you can relate knowledge to experience, then draw some wisdom. And you have to have those three factors in order to have wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're missing out any of, of those three. Now, some people may say, hold on, you don't need knowledge. You can go on experience. Yes, you can. But then when you get experience and it doesn't work, that becomes knowledge. <laughs> you now know what doesn't work and you're gonna maybe experience something else. And as you keep on doing this, and you realize, no, hold on. Uh, now you don't have to use this in this instance, or it's better to use this in that instance. Now you have used analysis or judgment, and that becomes wisdom. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. So now so that we've proven that I'm right, let's go back to the question. We um, haven't, but OK. So <laughs> well, there's three years. I've got three years against me, so clearly I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wise enough. I'm wise enough to know that you're all full of it. it was so starting in wisdom is, Sorry, go on. Kim. Are go we on. drowning in knowledge? Absolutely. Yes. How am I? So how can we drowning? Yeah, I think it's a good question. Mm, because we're constantly bombarded. You know, the statistics are that we check our phones on average two hundred and fifty times a day. Sometimes we don't even realise that we're doing that. Everywhere we turn. Oh, constant bombardment of information and what's happened is it's become quantity over quality and so we we don't dig through the surface we just accept a lot of what we see and hear as truth or gospel or fact um we don't actually uncover because we're just so overwhelmed with constant information so i 100 percent think we're drowning in knowledge um yeah. what about you guys uh, i think they, they I think that the, uh, with the onset of the internet, absolutely, we, 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 we've got a swimming pool of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And something else has happened. We, we have grown to be more and more fast food uh, kind of thinking with our knowledge. Yeah. And so a lot of this knowledge that we read or we see on the internet, oh, gee, from the internet, it has now bypassed our judgment. We, we sort of like uh, become lazy and decided to take that as a gospel now and I, and yes i think we we are drowning in knowledge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um just reiterating what the other two said is um in the 1900s i think we get in a in in like 12 hours what they used to get in a week 
So the knowledge that someone living in the 1900s used to get in a week, we get so quickly now. Um, so we're inundated. I don't think we can go through everything we've, we're given, but I think we do have that um, that mentality that let's just let's just read everything, listen to everyone, and we'll hopefully make our own opinion up. But um, I think there's a lot more to said about the wisdom side of it yet to come, though. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to go there just yet. Hundred percent. You're very morbid. You've used starving and drowning, mate. It's very morbid. Are you okay? Well, Chris didn't come up with that. The, it's a Definitely famous not quote. starving. It's a famous quote. I, I think, I think with the, everything that's going on in the world, you guys are right in one aspect where it would be easy to drown in knowledge. But I believe where wisdom comes into it or, or smarts comes into it is you have a choice not to drown in knowledge and, and work on what you should be listening to and what you shouldn't be listening to. I think too many people are drowning in knowledge, but do we have to drown in knowledge because of the internet and all that stuff? No, we don't. So... No, we know we don't have to, but the line is not whether we, we should. Are we? I don't think we all are. No, all right. So I don't think we're all drowning in knowledge. I think the smart people aren't drowning in knowledge. And the, that's not, the, that's the, the, the question is, are we all drowning in knowledge? The question I don't is, think we all are. why is it there's so much knowledge and not so much wisdom? I think that that's the question, all right? The question is not like who is not and who is. That's not the, the question. The question is, why is there so much of this and not so much of this? I, I think that's what it is. Very, it would be very, very easy to drown in all the knowledge, and a lot of it is crap, so that we've got to define knowledge because... Most of what we hear isn't exactly knowledge. It's just people sprouting off, much like this podcast, right? We're not giving people knowledge. We're just talking rubbish. Uh, I think we're giving them wisdom. Maybe. That's why we're wine and wisdom. Okay. Okay. The, the, the collective. You, you're saying before about the, you know, the, there's a few that, you know, don't drown. They select what they want to read. We're talking about the mass. We're talking about the collective, the, the general it'd population. Easy, it and, would be very easy with... The drowning knowledge, right? So I think I the guess. biggest thing I think the biggest thing about drowning in knowledge is, and and this is the sort of the one thing I took away. Most people are looking for a quick fix to their problems in life. Yeah, because that's so the, they're going to read something that doesn't suit me. What else can I read? So whether it's a magic pill, an injection, a magic cream, the perfect prospecting script that gets me an appointment every time, you know, what whatever the per perfect partner, whatever it may be, people are looking for the mm. quick fix. Um, yeah. Uh, People want things to be easy and fast in the society. They, they always have, but more so now. So I think that's why I really, this is my take on it more so, is that when we say they're drowning in knowledge, they have so much choice of information out there with the internet, with books, with, right. with the so-called gurus and whatever else. And that it is so readily available to them. I think some of them are paralyzed uh, of, of from moving forward because not knowing the direction to take, number one. Mm -hmm. and number two, I think a lot of people then, no, that's too hard to do. It's the too hard basket. I want the easy fix. I want the fast food solution, like Thomas said previously. And I think that's mm -hmm. where we're in the, uh, on that point of this topic is how do we help people to move beyond that? I want the easy way out. I, mm -hmm. I, I want that quick fix or I, I, I need direction. How, how do we help? I think that's what we need to do with, with this topic is how do we help people to see through that the, the noise of all that information mm, mm. I think there's yeah. another side to it mate it's not just people who um are drowning in in cons involuntarily it's it's people are drowning on purpose there's people sitting yeah, here who said i'm going to read a book every week for the whole year or i'm going to read a book every month for the whole year or i'm going to read this and do that or we know of professional students who do nothing but go to school to acquire knowledge 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 um but don't implement any of it there's professional knowledge seekers um which to my point earlier has nothing to do with with wisdom right and guys look we've, um, we, the three of us charged, so i've got I've, I've, even, I've even displayed my library so when people come here they can go oh he's read all these books but i'm a stark raving lunatic and a complete moron so it hasn't really worked out, but there's there's the people that we need to help navigate through the shit, and then there's the people who think that all I've got to do is acquire knowledge, and now I'm wise. And that's you know what the, 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 three us, of, the, the three of us are guilty of it, mate. That's the danger of 
equating knowledge to wisdom, right? Knowledge is not wisdom. No, we never said that. Wisdom no. is wisdom. We, uh, it doesn't matter how many books you read. I don't think that, in, in, that, in that respect, I do agree. I don't think that anyone has said that knowledge is wisdom. No. But you we, we, we said that knowledge and wisdoms are interlinked. I think that that's the point that we're trying to make. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy, there's a, a young guy, I think he's, what is it? He's 20, he works for, for us, and you can see the guy's got so much knowledge, right? He, he can go out there and do, recite clothes and do a lot of things. But the experience is going to teach him certain things because sometimes he opens his mouth and, and say certain things that shouldn't be said. Sometimes he does certain things that I go, shouldn't do that. But it's going to be experience and his ability to analyze that's going to really build that wisdom for him to go, yeah, okay, maybe I shouldn't say that now, or maybe I shouldn't say that, or maybe I shouldn't use the, the, this, this thing that I've learned right now. It's not the right circumstance. So in that respect, I, I keep on coming back. You need to read as much as you can. You need to study. And where Cam can, can then maybe disagree with me, but Cam went out and studied first, gathered the knowledge first about how to go out there and listen and sell. But then Cam had to go out and experience it, meaning he has to now use the listing information or the recruit training material and start applying it. Mm. Then he had to judge that works, that works better, that works in that circumstance, that not. Now he has created wisdom in the, in, as a listing agent. Mm. And, and that's why knowledge or experience, well, they're the same. You, you can do only knowledge and zero experience, although I truly believe that there are certain things that you can only understand by experience. Yeah. Um, and, and then the analysis comes in and that gives you wisdom. So now maybe they're not interlinked, but the way I see it, I said, I said the formula of wisdom in 2019 in October, it's very simple. Wisdom equals K multiplied by E stands for experience multiplied by J, judgment. That's it. That's how you get. Now, if you want to go further, you can see it. What if J is impaired? So let's go into that now. So my judgment is impaired. My analysis is all about my ego. Can you now see how it impacts on your wisdom? You don't have a very good wisdom. When so in that, I, uh, in that instance, it wouldn't matter. In that instance, it wouldn't matter how much knowledge you had, right? No, you have the knowledge. So I have the knowledge, right? I go out there, I apply it wrong, but then I go back and I say, oh man. Freaking material doesn't work. Sorry, it, it will impair your, your, your wisdom. And, and hands up, I looked at it and for me, the three, the three are really interlinked. No matter what you do, you can't remove one of the three. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I think you can have different levels. Obviously someone who's knowledgeable and wise is going to be on a different level of, knowledge, of wisdom than someone who was not knowledgeable and experienced, but to say that you can't be wise because you didn't have the knowledge to start with. How many people have had children with no prior knowledge of how to be a parent? I, I, I get that. I get that. But it, that, so they make it up for the experience, but they still have to analyze. I, I give you a, a very good thing. I just had a phone call with uh, with uh, someone, a friend of mine, uh, as I, I drove home from recruit training. Uh, she's she's been very unhappy with her life for a long time. Whatever happens, she's always finds a way to uh, of blaming life and circumstance. Always others. It's all and an experience. She's experienced a lot in life, but then she went uh, on holiday to Fiji, and while she's in Fiji, she meets people who've got nothing, and they were ready to give her everything. Mm. And so it, it, it hits her when, when she encountered, she got into that knowledge. She encountered that event of, he's someone who's got nothing. I thought we needed to have a lot of things. And now I'm encountering something. So now it's affecting her knowledge. And I spoke to her and I could feel that. And then she, she was relating that story. And I could feel the deep change in her level of wisdom mm. from 
she, she said she doesn't swear anymore. She said because she realized that swearing was nothing else but masks anger. And she realized too that while she's been going around telling everyone and blaming everyone, she said last week's uh, podcast, she realized that blame is nothing else but allowing others to be. Say that again, Thomas. She said that blame is nothing else but allowing somebody else to be the driver of your life. Mm -hmm. And so I listened to her and I realized straight away, hold on, this really goes well with this topic because here's a woman who got a new source of knowledge. Experience hasn't really changed. Or you might say, well, the experience is meeting them. Yeah, okay. But she said while she was experiencing the meeting with them and eating with them, she said, these people had nothing and she were, they were willing to give me everything. And here I am, right? I go home to a $17 million view on the beaches, on the, you know, in the northern beaches, and I'm not happy, right? And that totally altered her way of seeing life. And I could hear in her voice, there was no anger in the speech. Mm. Now she had wisdom. Yeah, because you know... you experienced her. No, no, no. It's a fundamental fact. It, it is knowledge comes from out there. Wisdom comes from in here. So it's not wisdom comes. Uh, well, sorry, knowledge is something that we can acquire, whereas wisdom is something that we have to uncover. That's why there's the wise old owl saying and stuff like that. And I think the difference is, is knowledge is, you know, acquiring facts and experiences and, and surface stuff but but wisdom truly is more to do with feeling i think thank you for backing me up i'm not backing you up though arguments for me you cannot be wise without knowledge cam you first have to one's out here and one's no. out here. okay look at it We're like this knowledge is the tool knowledge is the tool the wisdom, <laughs> is, the wisdom is how to use it you know and so that's that, that they, you can't have one without the other cam. What Thomas just described, and it's a brilliant story. Well done, mate. But what he described was an experience. Experience creates you. That, that uncovered, that uncovered. Yeah, but it was it had nothing to do with knowledge. She had an yeah, experience. Well, oh, my God. It actually, it did, mate, if you're listening, it did. Because he said then she listened to the podcast and she gained the knowledge of the saying, what was the saying? Blame is letting someone else Blame drive your is life. allowing somebody else to be the driver of your own life. Oh, oh, sorry, a podcast that did knowledge, it. Not, and that then the, created wisdom. Not the trip to Fiji. That was our podcast. The, Us the, four the, ministers. But, but all I, the knowledge together, all yeah. the knowledge together combined to make, to bring her that wisdom. Yeah. I'm seeing so, a lot so of, look, let's, let's not argue, you know. No, that's knowledge. all right. I'm not going to argue anymore. Let, let's, help, let's help people move. Past, you know, that I think one of the things that I, I really would like to talk about is why is it that people are really drowning? And I think it, people are not drowning because they don't have knowledge. And you could put knowledge inside experience. Yeah, you, you, you could actually do that if you want to do semantic. But why is it that people are really drowning in, wisdom, in, in knowledge and then they're starving for wisdom and, and how do they get out of that I mean we've got this this friend of mine who's done it but how do we get out of that mm. well I think it, I think it has a lot to do with what I just said in terms of the knowledge comes to us from an outside source where the wisdom is something that we uncover within ourselves. and I think and that's not an easy thing to do and it's not a, a sometimes a nice thing to do um, so I think that's all like that has a lot to do with it um it's, it's a choice too it's a, it, i think it's a choice to to i'm not laughing to, at you Lou. i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm not laughing at you i'm sorry that's okay because i think um you know and you said it earlier with the mcdonald's world or whatever you whatever you call whatever example you said and and chris said the similar thing we're so used to having everything at our fingertips our phone we can do everything on our phone it's there you know i was listening to a podcast about a journalist who wrote a thirty-two thousand page essay and he did every he worked at the white house and then after they done the stats and realized no one no one read past the first page we'd had 450 words on it and so what he realized is he's bombarding people with too much mm. um, and people people skim people nobody nobody reads from word one to word thirty two thousand ever 
you know, if it's a good book, you'll read it. But the majority of us, and, and that's a lot of us, won't read. We skim through, we pick the information that catches our attention. If it doesn't, we spend 26 seconds on it and then we turn it off. So, you know, it's, we just, because we're so bombarded daily with, it's emails, it's a WhatsApp alert, it's a text message, it's a Facebook notification, it's it's phone call, it's, the, it's you know, everything. Yeah. Um, and and you know I don't think we I don't think there's people that are intentionally starving. I I pretty well believe it's we're in a time in our lives where we don't really much have a choice unless we are aware of what's happening and choose to not engage in certain things. You you know a lot about the brain too. Mm. Can the brain only handle so much, or is there an infinite supply? Is there, is there an infinite? Filing cabinet in there that you can just keep pumping it full of information. You can store it all. No, I, I used to say that the brain can handle any, everything, but I don't believe it anymore. Uh, who's playing with right. something uh, around them because it's dropping and, and it's making noise? It's yeah, it's Chris's stomach. Okay. Uh, anyway, guys, no. I uh, to answer your question, I think that the uh, I think that uh, our brain is like a bucket. We can do a lot of things, but we can't do everything. For example, I, when it comes to remembering movies, I've got no ideas. Uh, my wife and I can watch the same movie. She would say a movie that we've seen something like five years ago, everything about that movie. And I would talk about a movie that we saw three months ago and I go, I haven't, I've never seen it. Yeah. Now, now names, names, it's the same thing. I don't remember names of the people who don't matter. I, I, I'm, I'm very sorry. Sometimes I meet people and I go, uh, really, you don't matter to really. I, I I don't even know your name. Like Cam, how many times have I asked you about your name? So, the, the, so, <laughs> so sorry. I just, just so, usually it starts with an F or a C. You call me lots of names, mate. It's just yeah, like, it that's a problem, mate. No, I'm just joking. Name's Cam. I'm just okay. <laughs> anyway, I was I was training your recruit, Cam, and I thought no. This scam looks better. Anyway, that's another, another side point. But so I'm very, we are all very much choosing what to remember. Mm. Yes, I, I do remember a lot of things about people's behavior because I have decided long ago that matters to me. So I, I, I look at things and I see things very differently. But I'm very, very sorry. So I, do, I don't think that the brain can handle everything. Okay. So one of the, my theory is this, the reason people are drowning in knowledge is because they acquire the knowledge or they don't use the knowledge and thus knowledge just keeps banking up and banking up and never has a chance to turn into wisdom. If you had gone out after a movie TL and told 10 friends about it, recited every line, like the minute Louise mentioned a Velvet label, I went straight to a Seinfeld episode where George shraped himself completely in Velvet. That was the whole episode, right? I went there, but because it wouldn't have mattered to you, T.O., you wouldn't remember a Seinfeld episode, right? No. So... Only you matter to me, mate. Only the you. Bridge, the bridge between knowledge and wisdom. I yeah. went looking for a book from the Singapore trip, T.O., because you drew a picture on a whiteboard that, that went from potential to um, result or potential, and then I can't remember what the bottom word was, but there was a big gap in the middle, and it, you, you talked about filling that gap. The reason people are drowning in knowledge and starving for wisdom is because we don't take action. Mm. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and again, guilty as charged. We read a book. We think the book's great. We do nothing the book tells us. And then we ring it up somebody and go, can you help me with this thing that the book just told me to do four weeks ago that I still haven't done? But your brain can't handle anything, I don't believe, everything. There is no, there has to be a finite, there has to be a limit on what your brain can absorb. And I think the way that things become first nature or second nature is by enacting them, right? Because I can I can remember Seinfeld episodes because I've watched them 60 million times, right? <laughs> Love it, care about it. I can absorb a lot of information, but one of the keys to learning something is to first learn about it, then implement it, then teach somebody else it. And that's how you end up remembering stuff. And a lot of people fall down on part B and part C, which is where we yeah. don't implement it. But, yeah. And that's it never becomes never becomes wisdom. And that implementation is the experience sort of thing. Right? So it doesn't matter how much knowledge you've got. If you don't implement it, it's never becomes wisdom. 
because you yeah, never but I guess. Sorry, yeah, Chris yeah, Lipson, I, I, I totally yeah. understand what you're saying, but the but the question still goes back to Cam: Why are we drowning in knowledge? And I think we just have not on because our daily. Because we don't enact any of it. To... Because we don't oh. enact any of it. That's but my answer. Always, but we're not always enacting it. But we're not always enacting it. But we're not always well, enacting it. We are drowning. bombarded with information. Pardon? Right. Be I'm going to go out on a different limb here for a second, guys. I'm going to go something a little bit left the field here. At the moment with society and with our phones, um, Netflix, Facebook, Instagram, every time we check that, our brain gets a little hit of, is it dopamine that we get addicted to, Thomas? Is yeah. that right? Or yes. dopamine? dopamine, dopamine. So we get a little hit of dopamine and everyone's starting to get that. And, and if they've meant to do it or if it's by accident everyone's getting to, addicted to this check your screen all the time get this knowledge get this knowledge and we're not actually getting time to put that in into place like cam is saying that we need to actually put our knowledge into action we need to take action and i think it's there's a there's a, a multitude of things that stop us from doing it i think as i said before the first one is everyone wants the quick fix because we're in such a quick fix society Everyone wants that quick fix. Second thing is, and Cam, you said it very well a few, uh, quite a few episodes episodes ago, was change is hard. Change mm -hmm. is very, very hard. And we are habitual, habitual beings. And to change that constant habits that we have in place, good or bad, is very hard. It's hard to go from, and this, I remember, Ken, you're talking about your weight. And you were saying to go from, and it's not even a shock, mate, but it's going from where you were to where you wanted to be because you've been a personal trainer, right? But, but you know. the three of us did it. The three of us looked for the short, the shortcut. The three of us gone, let's go and get Manshake to help us sort of um, do it. But we all knew that Manshake alone wasn't going to be the issue, the solution, right? We all knew that. You guys are talking about, you guys are about, like, we're talking about why are people drowning in knowledge, okay? You guys are we're trying saying to... Find because, a we're saying no, but, they're drowning because they're not taking any action. Yeah. I've, got, I've, I've got no problem with drowning in knowledge. I love yeah. to drown in knowledge. I, I just want to bathe, yeah. drown in yeah. knowledge. Yeah. But but my think, problem is I, I have a problem with starving from wisdom. Yeah, absolutely. But just to finish off what I was going to say, Cam, you said it earlier um, with your staff at the moment, you know, constantly hearing about interest rates, interest rates, interest rates, interest rates, you know. And the problem is, is we're so overwhelmed sometimes that if enough people say the same thing enough times, the lies become the truth. And, and you know, and so people don't dig further than that. And I think that's, and you said it yourself, like you told them turn the news off or, or whatever you said, to, yeah. stop reading. Because well, I took not... action and now they're not drowning in knowledge. That's the whole point. We drown because we don't act. Yeah, yep. exactly, Cam. But you, but you still drown to begin with, don't you? you and that's swimming. the whole point. That's the hey? whole point, Cam. We're trying, of, yeah, you're right. You take action and you stop drowning. But the point is, and the question is on the podcast, why are we drowning in knowledge? That's all I'm saying. And the answer I've but, given is because we don't take action. That's the Yeah, and the answer that I'm giving is that because we are bombarded and you first have to drown before you can save yourself by action, don't you? Because right. if you weren't drowning, what's the point of taking action? They ask you know, the other thing is about interest rates. People... I use wisdom to say don't worry about interest rates. They stop drowning instantly. So, so, so really the question, what can people really do to stop starving? From wisdom because we all want wisdom. are we starving of wisdom now uh, yes uh, absolutely I, I think we're starving wisdom because of the lack of action but people i need to understand you know <laughs> enough you know enough right now you know enough to take action can you learn more absolutely but you know enough no but you can so by your guys definition right knowledge plus experience equal and judgment equals wisdom are we really starving for wisdom or have we just not gone looking in the right places for it? There's plenty of wisdom out there. There's plenty of wisdom. And I'm talking on a personal level now. I want to talk about on a world level in a second because we've spoken about that before too. But plenty of fish in the sea, but unless you go fishing, you're not going to catch them. 
And if you and let's, if yeah, we talk okay. about if we talk about real estate, right? And and Thomas used the example before of the the twenty year old who will eventually gain wisdom. What's his option for wisdom now? People who have done it, people who have already had the experience plus the knowledge and the wisdom. I don't know if we're starving for wisdom or we don't look in the right places for it. No, I think we are starving for wisdom, but what a lot of people don't realise is that there's so much knowledge coming from out there, understanding that the wisdom comes from within. You know, it's like when we when we decide to make... Okay, we're going in a cycle again, guys. How are we going to help people to move forward? Hey? How can someone have wisdom from within without selling a house that never sold a house before? Because you know when no one starts with wisdom, Cam. You know what the thing is, wisdom I'm sorry, is. I think exactly what I'm saying. No, but wisdom is something that you acquire over time. Okay, wisdom is something that you acquire over time. It's not something. Someone who's like starting with wisdom. That ridiculous comment before about which person ever had a baby with having all the knowledge and the wisdom. Well. And my answer was, well, no mother on the planet because no one's, they hadn't been there before. They acquire exactly. that wisdom as they go. But your whole argument from the start of this is that knowledge and wisdom aren't mutually exclusive. That was your argument, yeah? Lou, I'm asking questions, mate. I'm not even trying to argue with you. And I was on your, I was on, parents. Either, I was on the mother's the side with the babies. So how you've turned the babies. But I'm not arguing with you either. I'm trying to get back to the bloody... I'm trying to get back to the, the the whole point. My question is, are we starving for knowledge? And if we are starving, are we just not looking in the right places? Because no, your question is, are we starving for wisdom, there. not knowledge? Wisdom. wisdom. There's plenty of wisdom out there, right? Now, when we're, we, when we're using the term time. starving for wisdom, Cam, we're using it in a, in a fact that people haven't got the understanding exactly. of how to take action with their knowledge that they've got. Exactly. And so because when you said before, taking action with the knowledge... People have got the knowledge. I believe the majority, not everyone, but the majority of people all have the knowledge they need to achieve yep. what they need to achieve. Yep. They may be refined and may be able to do better, but they need to take that action. And I think a lot of people aren't willing because they're too comfortable. They don't, yeah. they want the things. And I'll say it's a society for whatever, fear, comfortable, uh, not, not good enough, whatever it may be. There is many Absolutely. things. A lot of people would wish their circumstances to change rather than themselves change. They're yep. not starving we, for wisdom. If we're starving, they are starving right? for wisdom because without implementation and action, you don't get that wisdom. You get but wisdom. Starving is, starving is knowing what you're missing. Starving is I haven't eaten in four days. I really need to eat. The people you're talking about don't understand that they're not being wise and they need wisdom. No, do you know what you, you are don't talking know, about? You don't know what you don't know, is a saying that yeah, but, wrecked my head for many you years. Know what, so I go, Hang on, you don't actually know something you don't know. That is wisdom. Yeah. So right. what is it then? Is it no? Is it any different well, than to those people fighting. that out? Why do you think I'm, I'm fighting with that. you? Every time I open my mouth, you think I'm fighting. You obviously have a chip on your shoulder. I'm no, not fighting with you. I'm expressing my own opinion. <laughs> So the thing is, Cam, I'm allowed yeah, to open without them. you feeling attacked. If you feel attacked, then you need to look at it more closely. I'm not attacking you and I'm not trying to fight with you. I'm expressing my opinion as I am allowed to, all right? So the thing that you're talking about, you don't know what you don't know, but do you think that there's people that go through life and they always feel like there's something missing or they're, they're trying to fight, like there's there's... I, I love what I'm doing and I love my job, but I just feel there's something missing. It's 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 the gap, it's the void, and you only yes. acquire that through wisdom. Here's a question, Cam. You are somebody with knowledge and no wisdom. Well, how do you explain love? I'm not even going on about that. I know, but I'm giving you an example. The people you're talking about. She's giving it to him. I'm giving you an example about the points. The people you're talking about. Are starving wisdom. The people Chris is talking about aren't starving wisdom. They think they don't need anything else. I've been trying so hard to agree with you, mate. And all you want to do is try and fight. I don't understand I'm, what's going on. Am here. I trying to fight with him? Am I trying to fight with him? No, Seriously? no, you're, you're, you're annihilating him for the moment. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, Cam, is... and Chris is say it to me. Chris's people need wisdom, not your okay. people. Okay. But you're destroying him for the moment. Keep going, Lou. Oh, what you're saying, what you're, 
the point I'm trying to make and what I was about to say is you are somebody with knowledge and without wisdom, you ask them to explain or define what love means. They might be able to say, oh, that is something that two human beings, you know, they might get married and that's love or they might, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend situation. You are somebody with, a, with lots of wisdom how to describe love they'll tell you how it feels how it makes you feel you know all the emotions that you go through you can't you can't but you've got to have the knowledge first and then have that wisdom you know what i mean like you can't we, we stopped the knowledge versus wisdom debate half an hour ago we've moved on i know but you just time. but you, we were just also well, talking you were talking about we were talking about starving for wisdom i said are we starving for wisdom i didn't say anything about knowledge so that yeah, whole, my yeah. argument going back, going back to try and explain what I said is oh, yes, we go back. Get it, man. Hey. Oh my God! If you let me finish, you'll get it. But yeah. anyway, why, why don't you finish your point, Lou? Okay, the point I'm trying to make is going back to what I was saying about the void. All right, people are starving for wisdom and they don't even know it because there's that little voice in their head. There's that little inkling. Should I be doing this? Am I following my passion? Am I doing what I something? Well, so what is? What is that little voice? It's 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 wisdom. It's it's your wisdom trying to come out, and people are trying to, and hence why, in my opinion, they're starving for wisdom. They're trying to fulfill that gap, that void that I always thought, or you know. No, if if they're starving for wisdom, they wouldn't be having a little voice called wisdom. True. So what is that little voice they're having when they're starving for wisdom? I don't know. What is it? Could it be ego? Which is what Cam is experiencing full on for the moment. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. I'm just sitting here. I'm just sitting here. I asked a question. I said, hey, hey, I asked a question. Are we starving for wisdom? And I've just copped it for half an hour about knowledge. So fuck oh, before oh, now. Oh, I think Cam had a little say F? F? Did he just say F? Did I know? You did. Oh, he just said F if I know. Chris O, I think that takes us out of the equation. That takes us out of the equation. It's not one or two. You know, we put up with so much rubbish for so long. I asked, are we starving for wisdom? And everyone's gone very quiet. Lunch is going yeah, to be look, delicious. I, I think those people who have, have, have all the knowledge and they keep going out for the right knowledge and so forth, that, you know, they are starving for, for wisdom to the fact that maybe they haven't been directed the right way um, to use what they have, to use the tools that they have. Um, yeah. It might be ego, as Thomas said. Um, it could be that the fact that they're just looking for that quick fix. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons. But I honestly think a lot of people don't, don't want to put the hard work in. I think a lot of people, they just really That's want the easy starving. fix. Mate, that's all I'm saying. All right. All I'm saying is, you're right with what you're saying, except that I don't think those people are starving. If they don't want to do it, they're clearly not starving for it. All right. But they don't have the wisdom to do it. We, we're yeah. throwing wisdom, the wisdom around. Would be on the other side. Is, on, let me finish. Hang on. The wisdom would be on the other side of experience what is achievable with implementing the knowledge they have. The wisdom mm -hmm. is on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. So if they've always stayed on the other side and going, oh, what if, what if, what if, but never take action, in effect, they do. They are starving for that wisdom that they don't have. But they, whether it's fear or whatever, stopping them, they're not going to achieve that. Yeah, absolutely. So if we wisdom move on to wisdom, because we've thrown wisdom around a lot, but there'd be a lot of people, it's a very broad term. Yes? People going, what is wisdom? And obviously we've spoken about knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. I, I looked up, I did some research, Lou. Beautiful. And uh, right there's a, the, <laughs> there a study published by the Frontiers in Psychology that broke down wisdom into a, a few sub contexts. So one part of wisdom is empathy and compassion. Mm. One part is control over one's own emotions. One is self-reflection. One is accepting uncertainty. One is accepting a diversity of perspectives, which we seem to be having trouble doing here. Uh, one is decisiveness. One is advising others who seek guidance. And the last one was spirituality, a feeling of constant connectedness to an entity that is not seen or heard. 
the wisdom and then the way they took the study was between male and female mm -hmm. uh -huh. what's coming now lou i have no idea <laughs> what is coming hit me with it because i'm ready <laughs> So what they predicted in the study that was, what they predicted in the study was that women would have uh, more wisdom in areas such as uh, more social areas of the of the thing, and, and males would have more wisdom in the decisive side of things. But which they were pretty much right. But the one thing that threw up that they didn't expect was that men actually have more wisdom when it comes to emotional control. And women have more wisdom when it comes to self-reflection. Anyway, feelings. Uh, my feelings is I'm not even trying to pick a fight. Uh, my feelings is very simple. That proves the point that the internet is full of knowledge, because I think that they're full of crap. And um, I think we need to make it very simple. You, when you go in the internet, you can always find information that will support the way you think absolutely wisdom is to be able to gather a lot of this information and make up your own mind and that's not not everyone wants to do it so for me right to answer the question that chris asked earlier like how do we avoid drowning i think one you have to stop your ego what what I really enjoyed seeing over the last half an hour is what ego does to us. We want to defend our point. And we go into crap and we come up with like, here's an article. Mate, mate your article belongs to maybe it's one. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, no, I'm just trying to explain my point. Yeah, and my, my article didn't fucking pick a side. I've sworn again. It said this is what wisdom is. <laughs> we're off, we're off. Yeah, baby. You're the wisdom, the wisdom on it. <laughs> That's his wisdom kicking in. <laughs> oh, you're shitting me to tears. I've asked a question and got attacked for half an hour, and then I've read an article which takes no sides. You did not get attacked, Ken. You did not get attacked. If you feel attacked, did, did you scull two glasses before we started? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think that the other thing, Chris, that is stopping us from having wisdom is that we. We don't understand that analysis, which is that third point, analysis or judgment, it, it requires yeah. taking the time. You need to sit down and take the time to think about these things. But also it requires awareness. Like I was training some recruits today, and one of the guys, he keeps on having a twitch to the, to, to the right, so which is his left. Whenever he says certain things, second line, he would have a twitch. And, and when he really got to understanding this, by the end of day three, he changed it because he said, now that I'm aware, I catch myself doing it beforehand, you know? So I think we need to do that. <clears throat> Another reason I think that we, we are starving from wisdom is we are not having a, a listening ability. Mm. If, if you want to gather information, if you want to really allow your, your wisdom to grow, you, not only you have to shut down your ego, but you have to listen to the sage that is within you, because everyone's got that. Mm. Right now, right now, and this is an experiment that I, that I have learned from, from uh, what is it, transcendental meditation. You guys can actually listen to my voice and shut down anything uh, that is about judging me or judging anything that I'm saying right now. So I could see me saying stuff, you could actually shut it down and go to the back of your mind and be a, an observer, they call it. Deepak Chopra calls it an observer. You could actually listen to whatever I say right now without saying yes or no. But the minute that you start into yes or no, the information has to bypass that observer and go into your mind to be processed. Is this right? Is this wrong? And, and for sure, whatever your mind is right now, the mind is going to process it that way. You have a crap mind, the mind's going to process it crap way, you know? Mm, mm. And a crap wine, I don't know about a crap mind, but a crap wine. Mm. <laughs> no, you're not crap wine. I, I, I worry about your health. You, you can't be drinking bleach every single day and think you're going to be doing fine. And anyway, and, 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 and I think that 
he is why we need wisdom to answer your question, uh, Cam, earlier. I think that if we had more wisdom, we would have less problems happening or arising in our life. And time could really be spent on what really is important rather than trying to deal with whatever is not that important in our life. Mm, absolutely. I think we're starving for wisdom as a society, which is one of the reasons I asked the question. Uh, mm. um, yeah. I think we, we've yeah. spoken before, especially during COVID times, about how sometimes the brightest minds are the quietest minds because they, they couldn't be bothered dealing with the lunatic minority who are loud and proud but have no knowledge or wisdom um, and I think as a symptom or a prognosis as a whole I think we lack wisdom in the people that lead the country I think we lack people uh, wisdom in people that run businesses I think we lack wisdom in people that run the world and that well I think we are starving for wisdom mm. I only ask the question I make a statement about it I ask the question we're starving for wisdom because we live in a system or a society where it isn't the wisest that are put to the top. It isn't the wisest or the, the smartest that are running, making decisions. It's the most popular. And to get there, they don't have to be wise. They've got to be rat cunning. They've got to be, they've got to be willing to uh, break values and, and tread on whoever needs to be trod on to get to where they've got. So yeah. no wonder we're starving for wisdom and, and it's yeah. going to, uh, on a, what hope have we got on a personal level when to the, the message out there is forget being wise, just be an asshole and you'll, you'll, yeah. you'll get to where you need to go. Yeah. And yeah. so for that, I think we are starving in wisdom, but I don't think that's from lack of knowledge. I think that's from the, no. the systems that are set up and the, and the, the way the world is, unfortunately. Yeah, I think I remember Thomas in one of our seminars, you talked about the heart brain. Remember? Yeah. And what I what I come to understood is knowledge is something that comes to and from our cranial brain, uh, the one in our head, whereas wisdom is something that comes from the heart brain. And because it has to be something that is felt, I think that's where the struggle is, is because a lot of people don't want to feel a lot of people don't want to go there. Um, and I know I'm going to hear the words Brene Brown after this, but it becomes, and this is not a Brene Brown thing. That was wisdom speaking. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but no, but I think when it comes to feeling that involves vulnerability and a lot of people just don't want to go there. And I think that's a big are problem. Are we lacking, are we lacking wisdom on a world stage? Are we lacking other, yeah, other heads of our community? other people are supposed to be well, I don't think so. I don't think so, uh, Ken. But the, the, the problem is this podcast is a very good example of that. It's not that we're lacking, but we're fighting. Mm. And and the 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 to end to, to 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 really answer the entire question that we have here now, the internet's got so much information. Yep. We and we swallow the information without asking, it becomes our reality. Yes. When we get onto it, like people can see it, the four of us, we we are arguing what we think is reality. We are not interested in wisdom. We are interested in our wisdom, and our wisdom may not be wisdom. Mm, mm. So the, it, it takes a very special person to go, is my wisdom a wisdom? Because one of the things that I truly believe is that wisdom can only be singular. There is no two wisdom. It, there's only one. And the, and the person who says there's many forms of wisdom, many, many different types. No, it can't be. No, no, wisdom, can't. wisdom is wisdom. It's a singular thing, right? So right. do not cross the street when there's cars not stopping. Otherwise, you're going to be killed. That's, that's a wisdom. Some people say it's a no-brainer. No, that's knowledge, uh, experience, sage, and then it becomes wisdom. And in the end, it's only one. Like if and, and and you have different level inside, but there's only one. You know, if you jump off a building, wisdom's gonna show you gravity is gonna take you to the speed of 9.81. And all right, meter by uh, by square so it's, like, it's it's how it works. There's nothing else. If you don't accept that, that you want, but we feel no, there's Cam's wisdom, there's Louis's wisdom, there's Chris, and then there's Thomas. The minute that we realize 
Most of my wisdom is nothing else but the wisdom that I have experienced. And that is a very minute part of the real wisdom. Now we allow other wisdom to be part of it and share and make our wisdom bigger. But when we go in and we say, no, 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 mine is the knowledge. No, you guys are wrong. And, and now what we're saying is my wisdom can only exist if it comes at the rejection of yours. That's no wisdom. Mm. But getting run over by a car, that's a universal wisdom, right? But would you not agree, and I'm not trying to disagree, but, but the, the, that article before had sub-context. We're, we're going to be potentially between the four of us be wiser in certain areas than others right so i uh, well, i won't use me but lou might have more wisdom about being a mother than the three of us guys yeah <clears throat> i hope so in in that yeah, instance, i'm not disagreeing to you because obviously running out in front of a car is a universal wisdom but inside of universal wisdom people are going to have different we, Louise won't have your wisdom about uh, philosophy. I, I know, but I, I, I think I think that your, your your way of explaining it is not what I was referring to. What I'm referring to is Louise' wisdom about motherhood is only a very small part of what the wisdom of motherhood is. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I'm trying to explain. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's all right. I'm, not I'm, saying, with I'm not saying it's different, so, it, but it doesn't matter how much motherhood wisdom louise has mm. me i realize it's a very minute piece of the full jigsaw of mm. motherhood wisdom you know about i'll tell you a funny story about wisdom growing up my parents had fridge magnets on the fridge um there's a bit of wisdom <laughs> um and there, there was three that i remember but the one that i remember about this topic was Wisdom is what you get when you don't when you don't get what you want. Oh, that's not bad. And I always thought that was that was quite funny. And so in saying that, do we it's when good. we spoke about the experience, the knowledge and the experience of something and putting it into action, do we need to go through turmoil or or denial or, or not achieving something to gain the wisdom in something, to gain that knowledge in that process? Is um, that is that part of that learning process? I, I, I don't know. No, because I mean, what what, you, what you're saying is that do we have to go to through a negative experience, right? Primary, try, I'm going to say it again. Wisdom equal knowledge multiplied by experience multiplied by analysis or judgment. So, do we have to go through negative experience? I have no. I truly believe that the only thing that matters is analysis. And from that, it's about let go of ego, surround yourself with big mastermind group because they will help you have a very rigid analysis. Once you have that, you reach wisdom very fast, right? Because the experience you have, mate, you can drive as, as well as you like. You will, you will win some race, you lose some, right? You, you can read as many books as you like. There are some books that can be ad adapted to your life today. And there are some books with full knowledge that you'll never understand until maybe 20 years down the road. The ability to analyze, to shut down your ego and accept other people's analysis because analysis may be stronger than you will drive you to a faster wisdom. Okay. So there's a saying that we don't have to know everything. Find, a, find someone who knows it and stand on their shoulders. Find a giant and stand on their That's shoulders. That's correct. Do, do, do we still, though, need to experience those that process to absorb that wisdom? To fully understand it, I reckon. So you, you get I what I'm saying? Like, so I to fully think... understand what they're trying to teach us, we, we need to put it into practice and, like you're saying... It doesn't have to be a negative experience, right? So yeah, okay. What, what TL said before about my sales career, he taught, he wrote a book, he taught me the book. I went out and did the book and I my experience was the book worked. So I kept doing the book. That wasn't a negative experience, right? I think you, you don't have to 100%, 100 you don't have to go through pain to gain wisdom. You have to go through an experience though. I agree with that. There is no way in the world leaving 
Thomas's course and reading that book that I was confident that I could list a property, but I thought, well, well, I don't know any other way to do it. So I'll go out and do what the book did. So the experience created the wisdom and the, the, the knowledge. Uh, you can say the, say the word, say the word, the knowledge. Yeah, look, listen. <laughs> what what good would it be if all four? What good would it be if all four of us said, oh, it, 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 it would have been a very short podcast, right? So I tried. No, many have tried, and many have tried, it, and many have died. Really use it better. I think waiting for it to hurt too much. We we talk about people won't change until the pain's great enough. That's nothing to do with wisdom. No, change change and wisdom. Now I hope you all agree. Change and wisdom aren't the same thing. Right, wisdom can come from having an experience and going that that twenty year old who's never listed and sold a house before, who listened to a couple of blokes who have listed and sold a house before, he hasn't had a negative experience. He's come back and gone, oh shit, I listed a house. Now, what well, what we hope that twenty year old does is attaches that result to the wisdom yeah, he was given agree. and I, becomes I, wisdom. Right, so. I, I, it's, it's too much. You're putting a negative spin on it, Chris. So wisdom can be the no, most. It's not negative. It's not negative. No, no, I'm not, not saying <laughs> negative. Wisdom I'm can not be saying the most positive sorry. thing ever, mate. The, you just no, I'm, not saying all, I'm not saying all experience. I'm not saying all experiences need to be negative to have that wisdom. I'm not saying that. But by the same token, I am saying there's a lot of people that take, like, they have to go to a point where an illness within their life they, they have a, we're asking they have, about change that's let me change finish talking to let me finish talking before yeah, you jump yeah. in because that's number five another lunch we'll call, invite someone else um so <laughs> what 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 i'm what i'm what i'm talking about is sometimes people go through that life in that sort of cycle of everyday humdrumness right but they then they get sick and their life is threatened and all of a sudden, I'm glad you've been positive. and the wisdom, the wisdom of, oh, oh shit, I've got to change. It's in there and then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we're talking about change, not wisdom. The, the but, difference, but the difference is between people come from the experiences they've had with the near death experience. Wisdom yeah. comes from action. What yeah, you're the talking about that pain. That pain no, listen, that pain that you're talking about could be classed as knowledge, right? It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. I've got the knowledge now that doing what I'm doing now really hurts. So now I'm going to put it... Now, if I don't take action about what really hurts, from it will never come wisdom. Wisdom! Yeah, but that's exactly right. But that's It the doesn't point. have to be painful. It doesn't have to be painful. I'm you not saying it has to be. Why does it hurt? Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Does it hurt then, Cam? My God. Why does it hurt if it's not painful? About- Chris is talking I'll about preface. it has to be a painful experience to push someone. No, 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 Cam. I didn't say that. I prefaced with the thing. It doesn't have to be. But yeah. what about if? That's what I said. It yeah. doesn't have to be. No, yeah, that, be. that's what I prefaced it about. But do you know you what? You played though? football for many, many years. You played football and you were very good at it. So you tell us, right? Like you've got to pay for lunches. So when you're going to score a try and so forth and dodge and you scored a try, that brought you wisdom. There was no pain in that. And I understand, well, unless you get tackled, but I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is there are some people that has to take them to that point before they have the wisdom to change. No. Yeah, I 100% agree with you, Chris, because, you know, you've got people that go through life experience and, and terrible, horrible situations, you know, financial problems, death, you know, losing a loved one, losing a child, all of that, like it, it, the wisdom involves a healthy, healthy dose of perspective and, and the ability to make sound judgments. You can only do that when you've been there and able to look past that now and be able to go, well, shit, that put things in perspective for me. And I'm able to make some sound judgments from that point until you've been there. You don't know. It's like, it's like that bloody song, you know, you only miss the, you only hate the road when you're missing home. Well, you wouldn't miss home if you hadn't been there. So you've got to go through experience, good or bad, to find perspective. If you don't have so, the experience, you can't create a perspective. So we're, not, we're only have about experience to find wisdom. We've, we've only got about ten minutes left in the podcast. No, we only have two minutes left. We only have two minutes left. So why don't we have uh, Cam and Chris close it this week? So let's start with Cam first. Look, I, I think we. we, we 
arguing too much about the same topic and arguing for no reason. I think there's a big gap between knowledge and wisdom and that gap is action. Doesn't matter how many books you read, if you don't do anything about the books you read, you're never going to incorporate the wisdom that it was trying to teach you. And that goes for life. I do not believe for one second that you absolutely have to reach, reach rock bottom before you start looking for wisdom because on the way to rock bottom there's going to be a lesson here a lesson here a lesson here a lesson here and if you choose to do nothing about that then that's on you um of course it makes sense that wisdom and knowledge are intertwined but just because you've got the knowledge does not make you wise very nice awesome, awesome. and uh, to sum it all up you know enough Anyone listening, you know enough. I heard a saying, success is the uncommon application of common knowledge. <laughs> just go out there and do what you know, but just do it. And with that, you'll get results and you'll get action, results positive and negative. Just get out there and do it. Right. And if you're finding hard, replace bad habits with good habits. Simple as that. All right. All right. I lied. You're going to stop, stop it. I lied, so I would like Louise to close it this week. <laughs> but we only had two minutes. Okay. So I'll make it quick, 30 seconds. Uh, okay. So sadly, I think a lot of people can gain a lifetime of knowledge and never really find the wisdom in it. And I think the shame about that is, is because wisdom, it's not something, it, as I said earlier, knowledge is something we acquire. Wisdom is something we have to uncover. And a lot of people just don't want to go there um, because it involves a lot of feeling. If you think something and you say it, you're probably talking from a knowledge base. If you feel something and you say it, you're probably talking from a wisdom base. And I think that's the difference is some people, some people, they think after and, and it's a thing that they say that wisdom comes later in the quiet times after what's said and done. Wisdom comes in the quiet after we've said what we've said. Very well said, Lou. Uh, the hairdo's brought something in. Uh? Anyway, <laughs> guys, um, it's been a very right. good podcast because we, we got another lunch out of game. <laughs> uh, does that does that in old mine and Chris's? <laughs> we can't really do that because the only guy that's losing is me. Why? You've got five lunches. Still, you still got five lunches. <laughs> Use your wisdom and and uh, until the next podcast, think about it. <laughs> Thanks, Bye, very, guys. Thanks very much today, guys. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>